Hey guys, welcome back. So this fall I am planning on putting up my pasture fencing um, for back here around the barn. It's gonna go from the barn down the driveway toward the orchard and then from there it's gonna go down and across the back side of the pond dam and then kind of come back around here to the back side of the barn. And it's not gonna be a huge area, it's only gonna be about one and a quarter acres. So it's not, it's not huge, it's plenty enough room for the animals I have and it's gonna give me you know, a lot of extra space where I can probably get me maybe even a couple cows or some sheep to be able to graze out here as well. So before I get started on that fence this fall, I had one more set of trees. I've got two trees that still need to be cut down and they are actually right here behind me. Um, and they're the honey locust trees. So they're the, these are the thorned variety. They're a thorn tree. And I just hate messing with these trees. And I've probably put it off too long. They're a super fast growing tree and they probably grew, they probably grew another six to eight feet already this year. Um, so I'm finally gonna, finally gonna get these trees cut down so I can bring some fencing right through where these, where, where these trees are sitting. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna continue the barnyard fence which I'm straight in line with, and it's gonna come straight down here through here. And I'm gonna make a little bitty fenced in area right behind the barn. And it's gonna be kind of like a holding area or like a feed lot, somewhere that I can keep the animals like in the winter time where they can tear up the area. It'll be like a sacrificial area. Um, and I won't have to worry about them when everything's all muddy in the winter time, tearing up the entire pasture. So it'll be nice having at least um, another area where I can lock the animals into and into a fenced area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my safety equipment on. Definitely gonna get me some leather gloves out handling these thorns and uh, see if we can get in there and start cutting these trees down. Now when we're done, I should have still some shade left here actually. I should have a walnut tree on this side and a walnut tree on this side. So at least we're leaving a little bit of shade here uh, for the animals when we're done. So let me go ahead and get going. So I just got done cutting all of the limbs off the bottom of the tree. That's probably the hardest part at the beginning is just trying to get access to the trunk of the tree and make it through all those thorn branches so you can at least start cutting them off. And then you kind of get in there and then you start cutting around the tree and getting them all removed. And then you, I cut up as high as I could and removed those branches. And then after that, I came back to the trunk of the tree and removed all the clusters of thorns that grow on the trunk. So um, 
you know, the branches have these single thorns that'll go down the branch and you'll see a thorn, you know, like every six inches down the branch. But the trunks, they end up just kind of growing clusters out of the side of the trunk of the tree. And they can vary in size. Some can be rather small, like two or three thorns. And then some can be huge. I've seen them up to two feet long clusters of thorns. So, you know, I've, so I've cut all those off. And I'm just basically, I'm trying to make everything safe around my area while I'm going to cut these trees down. So I've taken all of the branches and I have hauled those off. And I've got a brush pile about 150 feet away down by the base of the dam. And uh, that'll burn that, I'll end up burning that all up later. But definitely going to get my exercise just carrying branches today. I'll probably make 100 trips back and forth trying to carry branches over that brush pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut these trees down and hopefully they don't get hung up on the other trees. These, these trees, the branches grow in all weird direction, plus with the thorns, they like to snag on other trees and get hung up and you'll have a tree hanging in the air. Now I'm hoping that none of these trees are close enough and the, the branches aren't intertwined enough. Hopefully I won't get caught up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down and hopefully they'll fall all the way to the ground. So I got that first tree all cut up and got all the limbs hauled off over to the brush pile and the rest of it cut up into firewood. So hauling the limbs over there was probably the hardest part of it, um, dragging them over to that brush pile. 
Luckily that tree, I mean, it was the biggest tree, but luckily it fell toward the brush pile. So some of the limbs I didn't have to drag quite as far, but that definitely was a workout. And I think I got kind of lucky with that tree. It, as soon as you got about 20 feet up in the tree, the thorns disappeared and there wasn't any thorns on, on any of the branches at the top. So at least they were easy to handle and to get over there. Now this thorn tree, I mean, this honey locust is covered in thorns. It's way thicker. So I'm probably not gonna get that lucky. And this tree fell in the opposite direction of the brush pile. So I don't think I wanna drag these limbs all the way over there. So I'm probably gonna just cut these up and haul, put them on a trailer and then we'll haul them around over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and start cutting this tree up and see if we can get this finished up. So I was just getting ready to pick up all my tools because I thought I was done for the day. And I realized I forgot something. I forgot to treat these tree stumps. Um, if I don't treat them with stump killer, they will grow back from the stump. But this type of tree will actually spread from the roots as well. And you'll get a bunch of trees growing up around the perimeter off of the root system. So you really gotta remember to treat the stump or you'll end up getting like eight to 10 trees to replace it. So what I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using a Tordon RTU, but to apply it to the tree stump, it needs a fresh cut. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the chainsaw back out. I'm gonna cut these as low to the ground as possible. And then I'm gonna put the stump killer on there.
So that should be the last two trees that we need to cut down to uh, start installing our pasture fencing. So those uh, thorn trees, those honey locust trees are just nasty trees to deal with. And I s normally do it in the wintertime. I try not to cut them down in the summertime. You've got so many layers of clothing on in the wintertime that it actually kind of protects you from getting poked. So today I'm in short sleeves and I have got, I have got scratches all the way down my arm. I ended up getting a thorn uh, through my boot into my foot. It didn't go through the sole of the boot. It actually kind of came through at an angle and went through the leather on the side and got me in the side of the foot. And then when I was throwing stuff on the brush pile, I ended up uh, <laughs> throwing something on there and I jabbed a thorn in me, in my leg when I was doing that. That's, that was all my fault. But uh, yeah, those trees are just nasty trees to deal with. So I'm glad that they're, they're done and they're, they're cut down. So we've got a nice opening now between these two walnut trees back here. We've got an opening so we can run our fence. And uh, yeah, we should be ready for pasture fencing. I don't think we're gonna probably really start on that until September, but I think we're pretty much ready. Oh, there's one other thing that I need to do. Um, the, uh, the culvert, there's a culvert down there that washed out in the rainstorm here three or four weeks ago. Um, that was exactly where I was gonna, I was gonna take my fencing uh, over that where that culvert was to bridge that that gap um, so now that that's all washed out I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to redo that culvert I'm gonna have to do something there get that ditch all covered up so I can cross it with the uh, with the fence so that is one other thing that I will have to get done before I can start so I did install that culvert um, I think it was in January like the very beginning of this year I installed that culvert and um, I know a lot of people said I wasn't quite doing it right. So if you guys got any pointers on how I should install a culvert in that ditch um, and what I should cover it up with, I use gravel to kind of pack it in there with uh, road pack gravel and um, all that ended up washing out. So it probably wasn't the best thing to pack the culvert in with. So any suggestions on the culvert and, and what I need to, do I need to put dirt around it? Um, what do I need to do? Uh, to, to get that installed and so it doesn't wash out on me. So yeah, any suggestions, go ahead and put that in the comments down below. That's probably something I'm gonna tackle here in the next couple weeks. So anyway, I think that's it for today, guys. Um, it has been a long, hot day. It's actually been a cooler day, but everything I did was in the sun, it seemed like. As soon as I cut the trees down, I didn't have no shade no more, and then it was just hot and miserable the rest of the day. So yeah, I'm ready for, uh, I'm ready to call it and go inside and chill for a little bit so thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one